All right, Math 201 students, this is some extra examples from sections 4.4, 4.5, and 5.1. Um, starting with, I believe this is in section 4.5. Yes, um, I did not have this one marked that we had completed it, so I'm going to make sure I put it on the video. Uh, the cost of producing X units of a product is modeled by C equals 500 plus 300 X minus 300 natural log of X for X is greater than or equal to 1. And they want us to find the average cost function. Remember that C bar is just C divided by X. So we're going to take our function and divide each term by X. So that would be 500 over X my, uh, plus 300 minus, I'm going to write this as 300 times natural log of x over x. The next part, and that's just the average cost function, the next part asks us to find the minimum average cost. That means we're going to be doing a derivative. So when we take the first derivative of c bar, we would have that this number is 500x to the negative 1. So we would get that this is negative 500 over x to the, or x to the negative 2, so that'd be x squared in the denominator. 300 would be a derivative of nothing. We'd have our minus 300, and this is a quotient rule. So I'm going to write over here to the side, this is natural log of x and x. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of x is 1. So this is going to be uh, 1 over x times x is just going to be 1 minus natural log of x times 1, which would just be natural log of x all over the bottom squared, which is x squared. Now if we kind of work this out, this is negative 500 minus 300 times 1 would be still be negative 300. Negative 300 times negative natural log, it would be positive 300 natural log of x all over x squared. And that means that this is negative 800 plus 300 natural log of x over x squared. So that's my c bar prime in simplest form. And then the, remember the critical values are numbers where either the denominator does not exist for that derivative or it's the top would be equal to zero. Now the bottom would be x equals zero, but that doesn't work because of our domain we were given. Um, so we need to solve the negative 800 plus 300 natural log of x to see if we can find that minimum average cost value. So we'll add the 800 over divide by 300, so that makes this 8 thirds. And then we can use, remember the fact that this is an e here, to rewrite this in exponential form. So it's e to the 8 thirds equals x. So then we have 8 divided by 3, and then we're going to use that as our exponent on the e. So it's about 1439. Now that is number of units. So about 14 units or 14.39. So the actual uh, minimum, so this is the units, remember. If we want the average cost, we need to put our minimum value of units into the uh, average cost function. So this is going to be C bar is 500 divided by 14.39 plus 300 minus 300 times natural log of 14.39 divided by 14.39. Kind of running out of space. So let's do that fraction part first. Um, so that is 14.39 natural log divided by 14.39 times a negative 300 plus a 300 and then we have plus, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 500 divided by 14.39. And if I round that to, it says four decimal or two decimal places, that'd be $279 and 15 cents. Okay, moving on. In section 5.1, I believe that we skipped over number 10. So we're supposed to be finding the particular solution, so that means we're going to be doing an antiderivative. 
uh, which gives us a family of functions that are going to have our derivative, but we want to make a particular equation. So what that tells us is that the family of functions, big F of X, is equal to the integral of little f prime of x dx and we're going to work this out so this would be the integral of 2x minus 2 dx so big f of x is that'd be 2x squared divided by 2 so that's just going to be x squared minus 2x and then remember the constant of integration which is plus c we know that f of 1 if we plug in that f of 1, the actual f of 1 part is a 2. This is a 1 minus 2 plus c. So that is 2 equals negative 1 plus c. So c equals 3. So the particular function that has this is the derivative and goes through that ordered pair is x squared minus 2x plus 3. And you can even check that by plugging 1 in and making sure that the answer comes out to a 2. All right, and then we had this number 13. It says find the revenue and demand function for the given marginal. Um, so remember, a marginal is like a derivative, so this is like an r prime. So we're doing that r of x is equal to the antiderivative or integral of r prime of x dx. So we put in our marginal revenue, which is 225 minus 3x dx. We take our antiderivative, so we add a power, remember, essentially, and divide by the number. So this is 225x. This will be minus 3x squared over 2. We have our plus c. And it is understood that anytime you're doing a revenue function, if you have zero items produced, you make zero revenue. So that is an understood point you can use for revenue. So r of 0 equals 225 times 0 minus 3 halves times 0 squared plus c. This is 0, this is 0 plus c, so c is 0. So the actual revenue function is 225x minus 3 halves x squared plus 0, which we don't have to write. They also asked me for the demand function. Remember that revenue is just x times p. So normally we've been solving or finding revenue by timesing our p function by x. This time we want to find p by dividing revenue by x. So little p is going to be 225 div x divided by x would just be 225 and this one will lose an x as well. So this would just be x to the first. So there I have both my revenue and my demand function. And I believe that was the last one that I had marked because 5.2 and 5.3 were done in class with you guys.